In 1967, whilst the US's first spy satellite, Corona, was busy photographing the Soviet Union, something unusual was spotted. It looked like a massive plane, but its wings were too short. It also sported the Soviet Navy flag on its fuselage. So what was it? Maybe an unidentified aircraft? Or some new design of amphibious vehicle? This Leviathan was in fact the Akranoplan, a new class of what is now known as a ground effect vehicle, and that uses a phenomenon that occurs when a wing is travelling close to the ground. The Akranoplan was the brainchild of Rotislav Alexiev, a Russian designer who began his career working on high-speed hydrophiles. Throughout the 1950s, he developed a number of successful ships, rising to lead the Central Hydrophile Design Bureau in the city of Gorky on the River Volga. But still, his thirst for speed led him to his most famous idea, to lift the hydrophile's fins out of the water entirely. Alexiev's innovation was to use this ground effect phenomena, and he envisioned a huge vehicle with the capacity of a ship, but the speed of an aircraft. The ground effect works when a wing is provided with extra lift by the cushion of trapped air between the surface below and the wing itself and enables a combination of greater aircraft weight for less power and or greater fuel efficiency. However, his designs would cost a lot of money to build, a tough sell when the resources were thinly spread in Soviet Russia. However, if a military use for the Akrana plan could be found, then the project's models could be scaled up. The Gorky engineers drew up plans for a prototype Akrana plan that would be large enough to transport hundreds of troops or bring a battery of missiles to within range of enemy territory. The benefits for the Navy were obvious. The Akrana plan would travel at high speed, just above the surface of the sea, but below enemy radar. It would also be immune to mines, torpedoes and anti-submarine nets. In 1960, Alexiev attended a Communist Party meeting where Khrushchev was in attendance, and immediately captured the imagination of a Soviet Premier. Khrushchev saw the Akrana plan as a way to face up to America's mighty aircraft carriers and championed Alexiev's design bureau. Khrushchev would later boast that the USSR had boats that could jump over bridges, but of course everyone assumed he was just joking at the time. In the early 1960s, everything about the Akrana plan, including its name, was classified. The project was known as Steamboat, which must have seemed appropriate as the prototype took shape around a boat-like hull. The first working model was known as KM, or Karabal Makit, meaning simply prototype ship. Although the KM was hidden in wooden casings and only moved at night, the strange shape was soon spotted in images on the American Corona reconnaissance satellite. The defence agency puzzled over what it could be. The squat wings didn't seem capable of lifting an aircraft of that size. In fact, they were so concerned as to what it might be, the CIA were even going to use a special remote-controlled drone project called Aqualine that originally had been developed to spy on the Chinese nuclear program, but its unreliability forced them to abandon the idea. Because of the letters KM painted on its back, they gave it the nickname Caspian Monster, but it soon became commonly known as the Caspian Sea Monster to those in the West. On October the 16th, 1966, KM was prepared for its maiden flight. Alexiev himself was on board, against all the usual rules that dictated that designers should not ride on test vehicles. The giant Akrana plan lifted from the waves and accelerated to 400 kilometers an hour with the power of its eight huge turbojet engines at the front and two more at the rear. Then the roar of its engines quietened and the KM cruised just as Alexiev had planned. The eight front engines not only provided most of the forward thrust, their exhaust was also angled down to direct air under the short wings to give them an extra cushion of air to ride on. During the 50 minute flight, the fuselage flexed and rolled, an issue which would later be rectified by strengthening the body panels. But the Akrana plan worked. They had proved that their sea monster could fly. However, the political tides of the Soviet Union were about to turn. Khrushchev was ejected from office in 1964 and replaced by Leonid Brezhnev, who was deeply skeptical of the oversized concepts like KM. Alexiev and his engineering team went to Brezhnev to present their ideas directly. 
but the Premier was unimpressed. At the end of a presentation, his only comment was about the lunch. Under the new administration, Alexiev's dream of a fleet of giant Akrana plans began to fade. However, his central hydrofoil design bureau was given the go-ahead to build a smaller transport vehicle based on the same technology. Called the Orleanok, or Baby Eagle, the first military Akrana plan was still a huge beast. 80% as long as a Boeing 747 jet and able to move 140 Marines or two fully loaded armoured personnel carrier vehicles. Alexiev's design bureau also developed another military Akrana plan, this time an aircraft carrier killer called Lun, which means Harrier in English. At 280 tonnes and 74 metres long, Lun was equipped with six Mosquito rocket launchers along its dorsal edge, which could engage an enemy ship from 90 kilometres away. However, the Akrana plan required considerable skill to operate and keep at its optimal height of 20 metres above the water. Pilots also reported fatigue from constantly scanning the oncoming waves for small boats. In 1975, during a test flight for one of the Orleanok vehicles, the tail and rear engine broke off in rough seas. Luckily, Alexiev was on board and took control from the pilot, quickly engaging the remaining engines to land the crippled Akrana plan on the shore. Although he'd saved the crew, the Soviet military chiefs blamed Alexiev for the accident and removed him as the chief designer of the bureau. Alexiev's independent character had put him at odds with the Soviet establishment, and within years he was demoted again and eventually sidelined. Alexiev withdrew from his research and spent long days sailing and battling storms in an elemental struggle with the sea. In his final years, he despairingly told his daughter, I haven't achieved what I wanted to do. In 1980, aged 63, he died of injuries he received in an accident whilst testing a new Akrana plan, which was to be shown at the 1980 Moscow Olympics. That year would also see Alexiev's greatest invention laid to rest. On December the 15th, the KM prototype, by this time in poor condition, launched for a test flight. The inexperienced pilot reportedly attempted a takeoff without engaging full power, and the sea monster crashed, sinking in 20 meters of water. Although the giant tail and stabilizer protruded above the water for a time, the first Akrana plan was simply too massive to be recovered, and it remains in the Caspian Sea to this day, lurking just beneath the waves. In 1984, one of the Akrana plan's main supporters, the Minister of Defense, Dmitry Ustinov, died, and soon after, funding was removed from the project. In 1991, the Soviet Union collapsed, and the remaining Akrana plans were abandoned. The massive Lun ended up in Kapisk, where it is still there today, whilst one of the last Orleanoks was moved to the Russian Navy Museum in Moscow. Although the Soviets and later the Russians were the main proponents of the ground effect vehicles, other countries including South Korea, China and Germany have all built their own versions in varying sizes, though nothing has been on the scale of the original Akrana plans. In 2002, Boeing in the US unveiled a monster-sized design called the Pelican, which would have been the biggest plane ever built. The length of a football field, with a wingspan of 152 meters and capable of carrying 1,400 tons of cargo, it would fly at 20,000 feet over land, but over open oceans, it would fly at just 20 feet above the waves and use the ground effect to make it more efficient. However, since its unveiling, nothing more has been heard of the Pelican. So, what do you think of the Akrana plans? A possible future transport system or a technological dead end? Let me know what you think in the comments. I would also like to thank all of our patrons for their ongoing support and you can find out more on the link now showing. And don't forget to check out some of our other videos too. So, it just remains for me to say thanks for watching and please subscribe, thumbs up and share.